Hello, how's it going? Um, if you're watching this, then you probably already know about the Discord server. But if you don't know about the Discord server, I'll put a link down below this video. Um, I do recommend that you join that if you haven't, because that's kind of where all the information gets passed around and people discuss SymphVR constantly. It's like an obsession. Um, so <laughs> I made a video the other day of me explaining one of the patches I'd made. Um, that patch is kind of a messy, fairly advanced sort of big thing. Um, so I thought I could do a few simpler ones here and talk in the same way about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, but kind of step by step so you can follow along if you want. Um, I'm not necessarily going to go through every single thing in the software, just kind of want to demonstrate how you can make some cool things with just a few modules combined, you know? So, um, you know, modular itself isn't a new concept and some of you are going to be really clued up on that anyway. Um, but I do feel like synth VR is kind of a still an uncharted territory in some ways and there's there's lots of ways that you could approach it and we may have different workflows so it's nice i think to share and see how other people work um so with that let's move on to the uh, first concept of the day all right so when you first load into synth vr you're probably going to get this intro patch which you can get back to at any time um if you lose it um and you don't know how to get back to it you can just come up to here so you go to settings and then you go session and you go load intro patch and that will always bring you back to this intro patch which is really worth checking out um but it's kind of self-explanatory so i won't really go into it um but you just come and you just press these buttons and have a little play and it'll all make sense so rather than dwelling on something that's obvious let's go and start making a new session so if you haven't worked it out yet you can bring up your menu at any time by pressing that on the on the riff uh, the quest at least quest two. I'm pressing the three lines menu button on the left hand controller, and you can tap it once to bring it up, tap it once to close it. But you can also, if it's miles away and you're over here, you can bring it to you by long clicking that menu button. Just bear in mind if you're using virtual desktop, that's the same button that will bring up the menu for virtual desktop within the quest. So it can get a little bit, uh, um, a little bit confusing, but you can do it. <laughs> you can do it if you get the timing right. Um, you can make this menu bigger and smaller by holding these dots here um, and you use your uh, thumbstick kind of wheel thing. Um, joystick sorry uh you used to move that up and down to make it bigger and smaller i'm pretty sure that the value size of this menu and the position of it is saved within a patch so when you go back to the intro like this um it will be back over there at the size that it was um but right so let's let's begin a new session so i'm gonna start pretty simple and i just want to start with rather than starting with an oscillator i'm actually going to start with um this clock module and this prime time module. Now, the way you make modules, if you haven't worked out as well, is you can go into it by clicking once with your trigger like that, and then you can actually read about it. Everything is explained in each module, and you can press create from there. But you can also, the quicker way to do it is to hold with your trigger and just click on it and hold for, I don't know, is it like a second? Maybe not even that, but just hold it and you'll, you'll have it. Hopefully, it flies to your hand. Um, so... Basically, up until about, I think, what, two weeks ago or something, this was the only clock. Um, and all this does is it sends out a pulse, um, which you can use to kind of trigger other things, essentially. So if we turn this down, in a way, it's kind of like a metronome, um, I suppose. Um, in modular terms, I'm sure there's a better explanation of what it is. Um, but all you really need to know to get this thing working is that it sends a pulse. Now, the only reason I've put this AMP module, and I use a lot of these, I put this in line so I can see what's going on and I can mar marry that up with that and say, well, that's, that's doing the same as that, isn't it? Um, also, you then get control over the volume of it and these, these clicks aren't particularly pleasant to listen to. So let's do another speaker and let's do another AMP and let's move that down there a little bit and then... I don't know why I'm doing it like that, making it messy. All right. So just to demonstrate that this is basically doing the same thing as this. So let's turn that one down for a second. Um, it's basically doing the same thing, but on this one, you've got um, the extension here of these kind of division modifiers. So what you can do is if I get rid of this one, because we don't really need that anymore. Let's keep that just there, though. 
If I take out of the two of this one, then this one, in, and when I turn it up, that's going to hit half as much as this one. So I don't know if you can hear that. Let's turn it down the speed. So this one's going at double, double, double the quickness of this one essentially. And what you can do with that is you can obviously use that to create sort of interesting um, different rhythms. Maybe if you're triggering different sounds, you can even do like a kind of triplet sort of thing. Yeah. But you get what I mean, don't you? So one thing I would say is the other thing that you can do with this clock is you could use it to change the speed of this clock. So at the when this isn't plugged in, this is the knob that changes the speed. When you plug this in, this takes over. And I think I might be wrong in this, but I think you get a little bit more range with this clock module over this one. As in, if you go to the highest speed on this one and use the one, um, you will get less speed than if you have this plugged in. Yeah? So that gives you more range. This one, this one goes right down to a really slow pulse. Whereas if you have this one all the way down and you get rid of that, it's a bit quicker. Um, although I guess you could chuck that and then get a slower pulse that way. But yeah, I don't know. But this, this one appears to have a little bit more range than this one from fastest to slowest. So we don't really need that anymore. Let's get rid of that. And rather than just sending um, like kind of pretty boring pulses to these speakers, let's... Um, I like to do this. It'd be cool if you could stick these together actually and make like a kind of little sound wand. Um, one day. One day. Like it'd be nice if you could snap that, you know, and make like a little little wand of delight. So let's <laughs> let's make another module, a slightly more interesting module, uh, which is in the audio sources. And these these are relatively new as well, these drum modules, but these are a really good way to demonstrate what these triggers are doing because you can hear it a lot better I think than a pulse so if we go I'm going to go out the four and I'm going to go into the trigger and then what I'm going to do is come out of the left of this drum module so that's triggering that and let's make that pink for no good reason and then let's put that in there so let's turn it up a little bit so now you've got like a steady kick drum yeah and then what we could do is well you could say well let's add let's put that kick drum in the middle and then let's make a snare drum. So we'll get another drum module. Now at the moment, you can't change the samples of these. They're built in, but they're pretty decent, the ones that are there. I'm pretty sure that the first sample on every kit is a kick drum. The second sample on every kit is a snare drum, as far as I'm aware. So let's try that snare drum, and let's put that on this eight division, and we'll make this one yellow. I'm just trying to color code these as a kind of... So there we go, we had a snare drum coming through then. Oops. And that's like as simple as you could get a kick drum doing the fours and then the snare drums on the two and the four, I guess. In theory, if you were trying to like make it make sense. Um, obviously, you would probably end up adding sequences in to do this, but I just wanted to demonstrate that these divisions can be used for kind of interesting things um, in terms of how quickly your patterns are going to be triggered or LFOs even or whatever. So we'll do one last thing and we'll make a drum module, the final one, and this one's going to be a hi-hat. So let's get another amp. And the only reason I'm putting these amps in line is just because the sounds can come through a bit loud if you don't have something controlling it. There's obviously the volume control on the module itself, but it's quite nice to have a volume control on each speaker. Um, and you, you could go into a mixer, you know, you don't need to go straight into speakers like this. Um, you could make a mixer and have them all going into that, and then you could have that outputting into some speakers or, or the out, main output. So let's put the final one on the division of two, and let's go trigger. What colors you make this one blue? And then, oops, sorry, that one. I'm losing what I'm doing. And there we go. Oh, yeah. Ain't that just the sickest beat? And that's it, you've, you've made the number one dance hit of 2021. And just to show you, if you speed this up, they're all going to speed up together in sync. Which is obvious stuff, but just so you know. And you can go pretty quick with it. And then we could actually put that original clock back in line. 
And then that could be, when I can remember where it is, you can make it even faster. <laughs> and even slower. Yeah. So that's, that's the basics of how the prime time and the clock work. Um, on the next video, I'll show you how you can use that with, um, with something a bit more interesting. All right, so just before I do go, I know this is probably pretty obvious, but let's say, for example, your kick drum, you wanted to change the time of that. Well, you could just, now you're like hitting on every pulse. So that's the fastest thing now, isn't it? And then we could even swap these. Or maybe we could even put the hi-hats on a kind of like offbeat kind of triplet sort of thing. And if you, if you take these away from the source, the clock, unlike with a sequencer, which I'll show you next, like if you, if you kept pulling the clock out of a sequencer, obviously these would get out of sync. But because these are working on those coarse values and they're all coming from the same click, it doesn't matter when you drop them in. They'll always be in time. It feels like it takes a little while to catch up, but doesn't it? But yeah, you know what I mean. And That's enough of that, right? You get what I mean, yeah? And you can do this with anything. So cool. Let's do the next video. All right, so I'll, I'll quickly upload this patch just so that anyone who's watched this can come and have a play of it if they want. But I mean, it's easy enough. You can make this yourself, can't you? Um, but I'll put it up there anyway. So I've just written simple beat made using clock division on prime time. Um, and then just try swapping the trigger cables to different time divisions from the prime time. They'll always be in sync as they come from the same clock. Um, so yeah, you can mess around with these to your heart's content. and come up with your own amazing beats. So I'll put that back to there. Have a go, have a go, have a go. I'm gonna upload it now. So to upload a patch, bring up your menu, go to discover. You can also load people's patches here. And if you press share, which I'm gonna do now, and I'm gonna confirm it, it'll tell me that now this patch is on patch. When's it gonna do it? All right, 115. Okay, so. Come and have a go or make it yourself. Nice. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. So I thought on this one, what we could do is we could create a slightly different sound source. So let's try using a noise module. Um, I will get to the synthesis on the next one, but um, this is quite important as well. And this is quite a good way to show it, I think. So I'm gonna make two more speakers um, and I'm gonna try and keep this to like quite a small amount of modules just to kind of keep it simple. So I'm going to make a space this time as well, which is essentially the reverb for SymphVR. And what I'm going to do is on the noise module, you've got the choice of white noise uh, or colored noise. And the colored noise will be affected by this color knob here. And what I'm going to do actually, uh, and you might want to do this, like it means you're going to get a slightly different um, stereo effect because the white noise will be slightly different to the colored noise. Um, what I'm going to do is just to make them a bit less harsh, I'm going to make a da -da 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 filter and actually I'm going to come out of this noise module into the filter first and then I'm going to go into there. So let's do that as white and then I'm going to make, try and keep this in some kind of, some kind of organized manner. So I'm going to come out pink for the left and have I messed this up again? No, I haven't. I'm going to go in there. So cool. All right. So that's that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these down just a bit because I think they're going to be quite loud. And hopefully now you will see. So 
this gives us kind of quite a nice wind effect wind or maybe I'm by the sea I've got the sand between my toes it kind of sounds like a doesn't sound like a particularly relaxing beach though does it it sounds like a winter's beach in Norfolk or something like you're walking <laughs> you're walking down and you're fucking freezing yeah well that's the kind of beach I'm on maybe it's quite windy but yeah this is your, your simple wind or waves effect good old noise and filters gets you a long way um, now we could automate these um, filters here we could use um, if I create an amp module and whenever I create a LFO module uh, which is in the control sources yeah if I make an LFO module what I like to do is have the output of that coming first into an amp module and then you can see what it's doing you know so at the moment that's like a sign pattern going on and if you put that to bipolar it will give you more range it will give you the full range from one I think to negative one um, in the same way that if you had sent a knob value of naught to one or minus one um, by subtracting another one um, but yeah so that's that's your sign pattern and then you've got your more kind of sawtooth pattern which is more rigid as you can see that's like a square one so that's going real t -t 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 on and off what you can actually do which is quite cool um, with this if you go into the connection mods there's loads of useful modules in here which I'm not going to cover because to be honest I don't understand some of them um, some of the logic ones I hardly ever use because I don't often know what what to use them for um, I think if someone else could make a, a really good logic video that would be really useful I think for a lot of people because especially for me um, I thought I'd just show you that if you put the smooth module in this one um, it smooths an input signal like a low-pass filtering and sends it to one output um, works well for portamento effects on control signals so you can see now that rigid square wave um, pattern is now more more nice and jumpy so if we take that and put this in here it's not going to do anything yet but if we start to let's color code that as well if we start to bring this amount up here you can see how it moves with this yeah and the more so you can control the another good thing about having this on an LFO is that you can control the amount the kind of range so you can squash it down so if you turn it all the way down it's flat but if you just tickle it up you're just going to get a little bit of movement the more you go the more movement but actually this works in a similar way to this really because that's that's controlling how much uh, the incoming control signal is is allowing it to control this frequency knob and and anything with like a cv in on on the modules like um like these you can control these as well so you can have this controlling the amount of amount of mix on the reverb you're probably not going to notice it that much to be fair Hmm. Yeah, it's quite hard to hear on noise, I think. But yeah, you can automate that way. But what you could also do, if we just turn these down a bit, you could have the LFO, but you could also use um, an envelope. And you could use an envelope. The envelope, by the way, is hidden in here, control sources. And you might be like, oh, where is it? You can click and drag on this and move it and there it is that's the envelope and this is probably one of the most important modules to be fair um, so I would say I would like it if this envelope started on um, it didn't start with the values like this because most of the time to get if you're using it musically most of the time you're gonna have your speed quite low you're probably gonna have your, t your attack on minimum because often percussive sounds which you're most going to use you want them to begin straight away but so by default I tend to grab the envelope and I put the speed to about there um, and then I bring the attack all the way down I bring and then I bring the decay the sustain and release pretty far down and that's normally a pretty good starting point for like how this is going to work so rather than using a clock this time I'm going to demonstrate this with a trigger so again if you come into the connection mods you've got a bunch of stuff here you've got uh, toggles and triggers the only difference between toggles and triggers is a toggle stays on it's, it's like a latch control so on and off yeah and they essentially send the same the same signal um, they just act they just have a slightly different behavior so this this one when you click it's up and it's straight down whereas this one it's up until you unlatch it uh, so in this case it's probably best to use if you keep held like that it does the same as a toggle but as soon as you let go yeah it's off so let's use this button 
because this works in the same way as a, as a clock pulse. If you, if you were to grab a clock from the sequencing thing here, and then you put that inside there instead, you're going to get... It's the same as if I press this button over and over again. So these can be a nice way to um, trigger things if you want to do it step by step. You could use it on a pattern as well. You could, you could trigger into um, where, the, where the clock comes in. You could use this as your clock, and then you could step through the pattern by pressing the button manually, you see? And that can be useful in its own right. But I'll get onto the pattern on the next video. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to have this button is gonna come in here and it's gonna act as the trigger in for this envelope. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this envelope, I could even put into here. Um, you'll see now what it's doing. So if I turn that speed up, it's going to take longer overall. That's the global speed for the envelope. If you take it down, it's really quick. What you could do is turn the attack up a little bit and then it's, you see how there's a bit of a... I think actually to run the full envelope, you actually need to allow the pulse to, to get all the way through. If you just press it, it won't go all the way. So let's demonstrate that now onto this filter cutoff. So if I put that up slightly, you see how I press, it has to build up because the attack's up and then it comes down, decays, and then sustains. That's how long it sustains for. If we put the sustain up, it's going to stay sustained for longer. And then I think... I think it will eventually come down. Or maybe it will wait for me to release. I think it will, yeah. I guess it would wait for me to release, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, if I put the attack all the way, as soon as I press, it's up. Whereas if I have the attack like this, it's going to swell in. And then it's going to hold it's going to hold at that level. So actually, if I put the decay all the way up, it's going to take longer to come down to this sustain amount, isn't it? And actually, yeah, that makes more sense, yeah. So, attack. And now it's holding, it's going to hold that max amount for as long as I hold this button. As soon as I let go, you back down. So that's, this. it works in exactly the way an envelope works in pretty much everything, but I thought I would just demonstrate it in case you're like, oh, how does that work? So, like I say, you, you can apply these envelopes to really anything. Um, you can apply it to a, a filter cutoff like this, or you could even apply it to, to a volume um, if you wanted. So you could have another amp, say, um, but I won't do that now. I'm going to leave it there. That all makes sense, I believe. Okay, so I've labeled this one up and I'm going to upload it. Um, so I've explained that it's a noise module being split to two separate outputs. Uh, you've got the white and the colored noise coming out. One's going left, one's going the right. Um, one is being modulated by an envelope, which is here. Uh, so when you press this button and hold it, that triggers the envelope. The other one is constantly being modulated by an LFO, which you can change the speed of here. And I'll leave it there and I'll just upload this now so that you guys can come and have a go if you like. Or you can just make it yourself because it's nice and easy. So let's do share, confirm. And what number is it going to be? It's going to be... 116. There we go. Alright. So come and have a go if you want. Cheers. Bye bye. All right, so this is going to be my final video for today, I think. So let's get on to the prime wave. And the prime wave is like a dual oscillator um, module, and you can do a bunch of different waves. There is also this simple um, module, which I don't really need to tell you much about because it is basically just going to do a um, sine wave, and that's all it's going to do. I'll just let you hear what that sounds like. Again, I've put an amp in here just to kind of tame that volume a little bit because it can be a bit loud. Obviously, you can't hear much at the moment because it's quite low. So depending on the speakers you're using, you might still not be able to hear that. But if I go up higher, you should be able to hear it now. And you can actually see it demonstrated here, the level and also the cycle. So if you go really low with it, you can get it so you can almost see it like that. And I'd say it's a nice smooth sine wave, but obviously it's not the clearest of displays. But I still, I really like the fact that you can see this. And I, what I would like to see is a bigger version of this at some point, maybe with some more accuracy to it. Um, but it is quite useful. And I can just about hear that, but I, it's just kind of, it's not even a real note, is it? 
Yeah. So that's that module. You know, this module can still be useful, um, but it has again, as the clock has, the prime time kind of superseded the um, the clock, and this one I guess supersedes that. But there's still there's still going to be the occasional case where a simple oscillator is all you need, and and you could use that as a kind of LFO as well. You could use that to control the pitch of this one, for example. So you, if if we were to take the output of this into here you're going to get that let's put it to a sort of sawtooth let's detune it a little bit but what i could do is i could use this to frequency modulate this and before before we had the lfos before we had the lfo module uh this was kind of the way to do it um and you still could do it that way there's no reason you can't use that you're just going to get a different effect this one you've got more choice because you've got different waveforms and um, these ramps as well. Yeah. So let's stop doing that for a second and let's just take that out. So what I will show you, so far we've been using these speakers all the time, but I'll show you the other um, output, which is this one. And this, to be fair, this, this one I used to use a lot because I, I kind of didn't really like having the spatialized sound because sometimes the spatialized sounds good, but then if I'm making a drum beat over here and then I go over here and make a bass line, I, I almost can't hear the drum beat anymore because it's too far away. So sometimes you actually just want to make a clean sort of L and R mix out. Um, I'm not going to go into it today, but there is some recording options here. Um, and you can actually, um, you, using this multi-channel setting, if you, I actually haven't used it yet, but as far as I'm aware, if you, every speaker you have, um it yeah file for each speaker so it will create a, a mono file for each speaker so then you can create like a multi-channel out by using so you could have like 12 different speakers and then have 12 different um individual channels coming out which you could then mix in another program um which is obviously quite useful if you want to get really deep on the editing side of something you might have done in synthia but yeah i won't go in that into that today um let's just use this lab out so what what i used to always do this was my, my go-to method, would be create a mixer. And because often I'd be like, oh, I'm probably going to need, rather than going directly from the mixer to this, because that only then gives me four channels, what you could do um, if you needed more channels is you could make, so let's say we wanted eight channels, you could have like left and right going into there and left and right going into here. And then what you could do is you could pan these hard left, hard right, hard left, hard right, like that. And then anything you send, if I send it now to this first channel, that's obviously coming through on the first one and it's going out both left and right. If I take that to the left, it's only going to go now to the, this first channel, which is hard panned left. So it, it should, the panning should work perfectly well all the way to the right, all the way to the left. It's a little bit jumpy when I did that. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, but anyways, we don't really need all these mixes today. And actually what I've started doing is if I'm going to use the kind of stereo mixing method rather than the spatialized method, what I often do to save on a bit of space nowadays is just grab two ads like this. And then what I will do is I will treat these as kind of the sums for my left and my right. So let's go left in like that. And then I'll use pink for my, for my right channel. So, that, so now all I need to do is connect this to that. And then this to that and now you've got it working in the same way i don't know why i'm getting like a little bit of cut up there I mean, is it the, the gain of it? it doesn't normally do that maybe it's this waveform hmm. i don't know but anyway oh man square wave so loud and horrible obviously sounds better when you put a filter on it so that's another way you could do it and then and then if you suddenly decide that you want to do um you suddenly decide you need more channels where well, you can just get another mixer and join that in like this and then you've got yourself and you've still got more room and you can just you can add more add modules so let's say you add some noise um just noise let's put a bit of noise onto this channel here um whoops didn't work oh my god it's so loud <laughs> but yeah so the same this panning works in the same way yeah so you could just keep extending it out like that and have the biggest mix you ever wanted. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a quick kind of, it's again, it's not a new method. This is something that, that people do all the time in, in other bits of software, but I, I thought it's quite a cool thing to do to kind of fatten up your sound in this. You could grab 
We haven't used this effect yet, but here's the echo. And let's take the echo and what we'll do is I'm going to actually split the output. So if you come to connections here, grab a split, we're going to come out of this into the split. And now we have four outputs that are the same. They're all doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one's going to go clean into here, whereas one's going to come into here and then into here. So we've now got the same thing happening on both. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this one all the way to the right. And I'm going to have the time and the feedback. I'm going to have the feedback all the way down. So now all that's going to do is the, the right channel is going to be slightly delayed to the um, left. And actually you probably hear it nicer if I put a filter in involved. So let's put a filter in. And this is kind of a classic technique for widening a sound. You do need to be slightly careful that you don't get... It can create problems in your mix sometimes. But you see how now, seeing as this is the only sound that's happening at the moment, yeah, that creates quite a nice widened effect. And really all you've got to do there is split your output and put one through an echo and that's it. You could even change the timing of it. And now you can hear that the right one's much further behind the left. You put it all the way that way. Yeah, and I, that's one of my favourite ways to kind of fatten up a fatten up a synth line. And then you can stick your kick drum just in the middle. They'd they just be like straight down the middle and then it's going to be nice and wide. You can even change the feedback a little bit, but obviously that is going to create more stuff going on in the right channel. I mean, another way you could do it is you could have you could have your output coming into a clean line, which could be this one, and then you could have a separate left and right um, echo going on, and then you could create all sorts of crazy wide effects. But yeah, so I thought I'd show you that, and I suppose the one last thing I will show you is I don't think we used the pattern in the last video, did we? So let's grab, um, let's quickly grab the pattern, and we'll also grab a prime time. So the prime time, I'm going to just pop that into here. So that's going to go to the clock here. Yeah? And then we're going to take the pitch of this and we're going to actually put it into there, the pitch of the prime wave. So now it's not just going to be a steady note. If I start toggling this now, you see how now the, this, these sliders are now the pitch of this. And the range of these is changed by this. So by default, it's quite a low range. So if we did like this, And you see, so that you don't even need to have a trigger coming out of this to make a note. Like, if you don't, if you're not bothered about having an envelope on the volume, which I'll do in a second, you don't need to trigger anything because this is already making a sound. All this is doing is telling that pitch where to be. And you could even like split that, so you could do a connection mod, um, and you'll you'll probably find yourself using splits a lot in SynthVR because you you always need another split, <laughs> basically. <laughs> So that's still doing that, but now I can take this and put that into the cutoff. And now it's almost like you're key tracking, you know, like key tracking if you're using Serum or something like that. Well, basically, the higher notes will have a higher cutoff range. You see that? If I turn that more extreme, if I turn the range up. See how it goes up higher on the higher notes and then it comes back down on the lower. So that's another way you could do it. Um, Probably a more common way of doing it would be to have your pitch doing that. And let's take that back down because it sounds better lower, I think. What I'll do is I'll just turn it off so I don't get sick of it. Um, I tend to get sick of patterns very quick. I'm like, I need this to change. Um, what was I going to do? I, uh, I showed you the envelope in the last one, but let's make another one. So this envelope, what we're going to do is we're going to trigger. So every time it's hitting a note, it's going to trigger out like a clock pulse. It's going to send that to this envelope. And what I'm going to do is obviously turn these down because I don't want them that high on this particular sound. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to split. Um, I'm going to split again when I can get to the splits, which is here. 
I'm going to take the envelope out and split it first. So then, then I can use that envelope for more than one thing. So let's use it on the cutoff, which is an obvious one. So can you see now? Because then now it's giving it that every time there's a step, it's, it's making a change. And what I would normally do is I would have, have an amp as well. And this is where I'm going to reuse this envelope. I would actually have, rather than coming straight out of the synth into the filter, I would probably have the synth going in to this amp, and I would turn the level all the way down, and then what I would do is turn this CV all the way up, and then what you can do is take the envelope, which you've split already, and you can put that as the control amount. So now... So now even if I take this cutoff away, you can see that there's a little bit of an envelope on that sound. Take away the attack, swells in, bring it back down, it's on the point, it's on the beat. Put your sustain all the way up, you're going to get a louder sound holding. Keep the release up and it's going to sort of whir into each other, especially if you put the glide up. Obviously, we can make this faster. Yeah. And then you can just play around until you get something you like. And then maybe you'd bring in a kick drum or something, so you get your drum modules. And you could you could just stick this on like directly on there. You don't need a pattern necessarily. You probably would have a pattern nine times out of ten. Let's just turn that down a bit. Um, see it's quite fast that kick drum. But it's in sync, isn't it? It's in sync. So that works like that. Like I say, what, what you would often do if you were going to bring a kick drum in, you might have a, another um, sequencer. And you could even use the original sequencer for this. Um, rather than having the pulse going directly into the unit, you could have it coming into the clock. And then you can see it moving along like there, you see? So now if I put the trigger to here... But what you'll find now is that this is probably out of sync, because what you probably need to do is sync these back up these sequences because because these have been running at different times they're naturally like they're out of sync with each other so let's just quickly do that control modifiers sorry connection mods but you think i'd know where all these things were by now wouldn't you like <laughs> so we'll grab a trigger again triggers are super useful for so many things and i'm going to grab a split as well because what i want to do is i want this button to split because i want this button to reset this sequencer and also restart this sequencer I think these work together. I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah. And then really, you know, it's up to you what you do after that. I mean, maybe, maybe you even have, like, um, rather than having... Um, Rather than using envelopes to do the filter, maybe we have another pattern. So maybe I grab another pattern and we use... Let's just turn that down, because it's getting sick of it already. So we'll do another pattern, right? We're going to do the same the same things coming in, so we'll have the same restart. And then we'll have the, um, the same clock as well. So actually we'd need to split the clock now. Um, so let's do that. Let's quickly make a split. So this this is the clock coming in for the bass line or the melody or whatever. Um, so I'm instead of coming straight out of that, I'm going to go into there. I'm gonna, now I can have the same clock going to this pattern. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit messy here, aren't I? So I need to start that. But if I press restart, it will start that pattern. So now these two patterns are running in the same speed, yeah? 
So what we could do now is we could use this for a different synth or we could use this pitch coming out here. And what I might do is just add a um, amp into here. So now what you'll see is that when I move these around, it's going to act a bit like an LFO, but you can shape it. So it's like a shapeable LFO, um, which runs exactly in time to the, the melody. So we don't necessarily need to use the trigger, but maybe we could use that for something else, you know? Um, it's really up to you. Now, let's say we could actually use this at the same time as the envelope. So, so now you see the cutoff is being controlled. Let's make it a bit more extreme. get the idea. So I will leave it there um, and hopefully these videos have been in some way useful for you. Um, if they have then you know you can like the video and you can subscribe and maybe I'll make some more. So anyway I hope to see you in the discord and making some cool synth sounds. All right. See you later. Okay, so I just tidied up this patch a little bit because it was a bit of a mess. Um, and I thought I'd just try and explain, just in case someone stumbles onto this without seeing this video, hopefully this will explain what the patch is doing. So there should be sound coming through as soon as you load up the patch, but if not, you can turn up the kick drum on channel three. And then you've got the left is this kind of dry signal of the prime wave. Um, and on the right, I've just added an echo, which is fully mixed, so you create this kind of widening effect. So if you turn that one up on its own, you're only going to get the delay. Yeah? Obviously, we want both. So I'll just keep that in there, and then the rest is kind of explained. This sequence is doing the... Um, they're all coming off the same clock, so you could change that if you want. And you could even have the kick drum coming off a different clock you might need to resync these sequences if you do that so yeah so if you press this button that will that will resync all the sequences and then you'll be back to square one yeah so feel free to just come in and have a play with it um i'm gonna leave it on that i think and then you get yourself a little electro jam Um, yeah, and I'll upload this. So let's upload it. Uh, discover and then share. So this will be on, is it going to be 117? It's going to be... Takes a while sometimes, doesn't it? 117, there we go. So the three ones I've made today should be 115, 116 and 117. So come and have a go. Hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Bye-bye.